Welcome back, and thank you for another episode of Mason K. I'm your host. And I'm Ryan Petrus. Do you want to attend the virtual fall career fair on October 8th through 9th, but unsure how it's going to look virtually? University Career Services will be hosting virtual events called Ask Me Anything, How Will Virtual Career Fairs Work? You will get the opportunity to with Mason students who attended virtual job fairs back in July and August. They will be giving insight and sharing their experiences on navigating the job fair virtually. They will also be answering your questions on how to prepare for this big event. The two remaining dates and times for these virtual Q&As will be Monday, October 5th from 5 and Tuesday, October 6th from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Make sure to go to Mason360 for more details on Hatchester. Last Saturday, Patrick hosted their second drive-in movie of the semester. The event in Lot K, where students had the options to either watch the movie from their cars, walk, and watch the movie from their seat. Safety precautions were put in the main social distancing through the event, with the chairs being at six feet apart. Matter the entire time, and students who cars had to stay in their cars. There were 50 fans in attendance. Brianna McEwen, a student at George Mason who attended the event, quote, it was a fun and unique experience and I would attend another one. And Mason Cable Network spoke to Alea, who was the co-vice president of campus events for PAC. She said, quote, both drive-in events have gone in that we are planning on doing two more for this semester, end quote. The next drive-in movie will be around Halloween, and the movie they are showing will be It Too. Go to Mason 360 to register for the event. On Wednesday, October 7th, Packin University Career Services will be hosting a student lounge in the Hub Ballroom. It will be a casual on-campus hangout where students can come receive career advice and get some free snacks. Masks are required and students will need a green light on their COVID health checks to enter. Make sure to head on over to Mason 360 to register for the event. Are you a fan of the game Super Smash Bros? If you are, the Student Center is hosting a Super Smash Bros tournament in the Hub Corner Pocket on Monday, October 9th. There will be an afternoon session and an evening session. The afternoon session will be p.m. to 4.30 p.m. and the evening session will be from 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Head over to Mason360 to register for this event. We now turn it over to Stone Mueller, who will be talking about fun and safe things you can do off campus. Stone? Thanks, Ryan. Hello, Patriots. I'm Stone Mueller, and I will be talking about the Alamo Draft House Cinema in Ashburn. The cinema currently has a drive in theater that will be operating from August to November. You can find movies and movie times, as well as purchase tickets on drafthouse.com. Some of the classic films they will be playing include Hocus Pocus, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and many more. Plus, they are also about to start showing some spookier selections since we are now in October. It's a perfect activity to do with your close friends right now. That's all from me this week. Back to you, Kayla and Ryan. Thank you, Stone. And we will now have it all. Hello, Mason Nation. Mike. Welcome back to another installment of On This Day with me, your host, Baker Michael. We're taking a look at some of the best George Mason performances that have been in the past on today's date. Yeah. On this day in 2006, the George Mason's men's soccer team defeated Georgia State University 3-1 on the road. The victory helped the Patriots remain unbeaten in CAA action and had their longest winning streak at the time since winning nine straight games in 1998. Mason needed fewer than two minutes to score on the day. Sophomore Chris Carroll scored just a minute and 25 seconds into the match after finding a lower left corner of the net. 
Georgia State took five more shots than the Patriots in the first half, but couldn't put any goals past Mason goalkeeper Sean Kelly. The game remained without a second goal until Josh Fleming beat Georgia State goalkeeper Felipe Carvalho 1-1 in the 62nd minute. The Patriots 2-0 lead didn't last long, however, as Alberto Villarreal got the home side back into the match just three minutes after the restart. Mason's insurance goal came in the 86th minute. Fleming found fellow goal scorer Carroll inside the box, and this time it was the sophomore's turn to beat Carvalho on one-on-one, finding the lower left corner of the net for a second time. In local sports news, DC United faced off against the New England Revolution this past Saturday night at Audi Field. The home side took eight shots, three on target, but fell to the Revs 2-0 after late goals by Gustavo Bo and Adam Buxa. Also last Saturday, the Washington Spirit played the Chicago Red Stars exactly two weeks after defeating them 2-1 at home. This time, second half goals from the Red Stars' Savannah McCaskill and the Spirits' Crystal Thomas finished the match level at 1-1. The Washington football team will look to improve on their 1-2 record this Sunday when they come up against the Baltimore Ravens in the Battle of the Beltway. The game is slated to kick off at 1 p.m. and you can catch it live on CBS. Thanks for tuning in to On This Day, and as always, go Patriots. Continuing in our weekly COVID-19 coverage, last week, Governor Ralph Northam and First Lady Pamela Northam came on campus for an event in congratulating the low COVID numbers Mason has thus far. A couple days later, the university was informed that the governor and the First Lady both tested positive for COVID. It was reported that he wore a mask during his visit and only came into close contact with a small ground of individuals. Contact tracing is underway and any individuals who might have been exposed will be contacted. One unexpected outcome of this pandemic, along with the lessening population on campus, was the increase in wild animal sightings in and around George Mason. There has been a significant increase of deer on campus as well as black bears. This photo was taken yesterday on the Patriot Circle. This is the second time this month that a black bear has been spotted, with the other sighting occurring in West Camp. Remember, if you encounter any wild animals on campus, to keep your distance and do not approach them. If you ever feel unsafe, contact GMUPD's non-emergency line at 703-993-2810. We will now turn it over to our weatherman, Jack Dunn, with weather stories and the weekly weather forecast. Weather Jack? Jack? Hello, Mason. Happy October. Today's, what, today's weather, while cloudy, was typical for early October. After some rain or Overnight, tomorrow will, will be cool. This weekend will be in the 60s, with Sunday being slightly warmer than Saturday. There is a chance Monday morning, mostly cloudy. Tuesday will be sunny with the high of 66, and Wednesday's high should be in the low 70s. This morning, the weather channel for upcoming winter storms this winter. The list of names are, are Abigail, Billy, Constance, Dane, Eartha, Phil, Harold, Ivy, John, Catherine, Lana, Malcolm, Nathaniel, Orlando, Peggy, Quaid, Roland, Shirley, Yuri, Viola, Ward, Zillia, Yardley, and Zane. The names of these storms are used to track storms that meet the National Weather Service criteria for winter storm warnings. Typically, 22 or 23 winter storms are named in a given season. Last year, there were only 19 named winter storms due to more than normal winter. The Weather Channel began naming winter storms in the 2012-2013 winter season. The winter storm names exclude any names that are currently used at Kane Center or any retired names. In order for the Weather Channel to name a storm, the storm must follow at least one of the following rules. Winter storm warnings are an area of at least 400,000 square kilometers and or covers a population of at least 2 million people. However, lake effect storms are not named and any lake effect snow warnings are not counted for consideration for naming a storm. The first named winter storm in is typically occurs in October or early November 
and the last named winter storm typically occurs in April or May. However, the first and last named winter storms often occur in the Rockies. It occurs between mid-January and mid-February. How many winter storms do you guys think we'll have this season? Back to you, Kayla. Thanks, Jack. On Tuesday, September 29th, President Trump and Vice President Biden went head to head in their first in the first of three presidential debates. The debate ended in what one could only call chaos and changes are being called for for the next two debates. Ryan, did you watch the debate and what improvements do you think should be made for the future ones? I actually did watch the debate and I agree that it was hectic. So I think that a moderator's role should be to facilitate the debate and stop any opponents from interrupting the person who's being asked questions. So I think there should be some reprimanding. What do you think, Kayla? I agree. I think the mediator should be able to mute the mics because there was a lot of going on after he even said, your time is up and, you know, they were still talking after he said that. I also think that should there should be an ASL interpreter, even though there are subtitles that we that people can use. I do think an interpreter will be should be allowed during the debate. I think that would be helpful to a lot of people. Yeah, most definitely. So, well, Patriots, thank you for tuning in this evening. You can keep up to date with news on and off campus if you follow us on Instagram at MCN on TV, on Twitter and Facebook at Mason Cable Network, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Mason Cable Network. My name is Kayla Cade. And I'm Ryan Petrus. Thanks for tuning in, Patriots. Have a safe week, and we'll see you back here next week on Mason Cable News.